the red planet, Mars. Elon Musk's birthplace in a slightly above average chocolate bar. But also a planet that continually fascinates humankind. In 1877, astronomer Asaph Hall made a remarkable discovery. The two moons of Mars, mythically named Deimos and Phobos. They are fascinating for many reasons, not least because they are two of the smallest moons in the solar system. But Hall missed something, something that seemed like it just doesn't belong. It was around 100 years later that something incredible was found. NASA probe Mars Global Surveyor took picture SPS 255103, that's easy for me to say, capturing something that no one could have ever imagined. a 300 foot tall structure. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Those are the words of the second man on the moon, probably. That's for another video. Just don't tell him to his face or you better have a chin on you. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black, if you ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented myself. you away from me? You're a coward and a liar and a thief. And so here on Earth, we understand that a type of monolith known as obelisks have been used for many reasons throughout history. For example, to stake a claim on a certain piece of land or territory, or perhaps to recognize some type of achievement by a civilization. Mine symbolizes my achievement of actually completing a Lego, not just a pretty face. It therefore begs the question of not just who and why, but when was the Phobos monolith erected? The Phobos monolith looks like the moon of Mars grew a nipple. That's on my system. Let's get mysterious. If this potential structure is so profound, then why hasn't there been a mission to go and study it further? Well, there has. It's just no one knew about it. As early as 1988, the Soviet Union seemed to know something that no one else did and launched the Phobos program, an unmanned mission involving two probes charged with capturing high resolution images of the landscape on the Martian moon. The mission was highly secretive and let's just say that things got weird quickly. Probe 1 failed prematurely, couldn't handle its beer. But Probe 2, however, was far more successful, capturing dozens of images of the surface of Phobos. However, just days before it was due to land on the moon's surface, a critical failure occurred. The official explanation was a computer malfunction, not that strange in itself, I mean probes do fail, until they got a look at the last few pictures that Probe 2 managed to capture before its demise. A shadow, an almost disc-like shaped shadow can be seen. A UFO shaped shadow? The amazing thing about the Phobos monolith is it's not the only one. As the idea of artificial structures on Mars became popular, AMA detectives have been pouring through pictures of the red planet looking for anomalies. Last year, Mars Curiosity rover took a picture of what looks like a carefully engineered entrance. Even the most diehard skeptics will want a second look at that picture. Here's another entrance. It's easy to see why people argue that these don't look like natural structures with cut straight lines and 90 degree angles. Here is what people are citing as a monolith in a crater on Mars. What about this strange object known as a shipwreck? This almost tunnel looking system, nicknamed the glass worm. What about this curious looking structure known as Star City? Could this be some sort of artificially constructed tunnel system? And it's not just structures that people are finding, it's living beings also. Here is an image again taken by Mars Curiosity rover. Do you see it? It kind of looks like a type of rodent. You can even make out the eyes. But they are all like overpriced weak soup compared to the main course that I'm about to slap on your table. Not the happiest of faces, but we'll take it. I know what you're thinking. Has the face seen the Barbie movie yet? No. What the hell is that? You can make out the eyes, the nose, even the nostrils and mouth. 
It also looks like the head is wearing some type of helmet or hair. I hear that's a thing. Let's back up. Viking 1 was a NASA Mars orbiter and lander. It landed on Mars on July 20th, 1976. The first of its kind in history. As much of a monumental achievement as that was in itself, it was soon overshadowed by something surreal captured by the camera on Viking 1. Taken over the Cydonia region of Mars, a 1.2 mile mesa appears to be sculpted to create the appearance of a face. Originally, NASA loved this finding. They shared it to the public to increase the enthusiasm for their space program, but they underestimated something important, something they never calculated for, the unrelenting curiosity of the public. People could not leave it alone. The missions were overshadowed by the hysteria for the face on Mars, which led people to wonder, did they find anything else? They did. In the same region of Mars, several pyramid structures were found, much like on Earth, where we would have some type of monument, for example, the Sphinx located near to the pyramids. That's what they found on Mars. A huge pyramid structure named the DNM Pyramid, named after the NASA imaging scientists who discovered it, Di Pietro and Molinar, with near perfect symmetry, this gargantuan structure stands one and a half miles tall. And that's not the only one. We see a cluster of other pyramid shapes near to the face and a potential destroyed pyramid next to them that people have nicknamed the fortress. But hold on, it's one thing to say that these images look like pyramids, but it's another to have an actual expert opinion. Unbelievably, we do. Errol Torren, a cartographer and satellite imagery expert from the Defense Mapping Agency, inspected the images in the 1980s. He then made this conclusion. Analysis of the object's geometry and its alignment with other anomalous landforms reveal intricate relationships that are numerous and logical and are suggestive of highly sophisticated design. The public just wouldn't leave the face alone. For years, NASA seemed reluctant to now even acknowledge the face, let alone revisit the area and take more images. That was until Mars Global Surveyor, launched in 1997, and after public outcry, finally decided to take a few pictures of the area of Mars where bleeding alien structures were. How very kind of you, NASA. And this time, they returned with a much better picture. Are you ready? Here it is. Nothing to see here, it was just a mesa where the trick of light made it look like a face. The high resolution image from the Mars Orbiter camera about the Mars Global Surveyor spacecraft shows the famous face on Mars in detail, clearly showing it to be a natural geological formation. Case closed? Nope. The story doesn't end there. There is evidence that the photo was altered. NASA contractor Lan Fleming felt like something just didn't add up. He returned to the raw image and discovered that beyond doubt, multiple filters had been added to the picture by NASA. Let's just say he was not impressed. By enhancing this image, NASA had drastically altered it and Fleming was in no doubt that this image was not just inaccurate, it was fraud. And so if you are a regular watcher of this channel, you'll know at the end of the videos, I like to introduce some common sense and balance and analysis. The doorway on Mars. I remember seeing this in the news and thinking that looks incredible, but could there be a mundane explanation for it? Well, yes. British geologist Neil Hodgson has a simple explanation. This is a very curious image, but in short, it looks like natural erosion to me. Rocky layers called strata can be seen on the rock, dipping on the left and higher at the right. These are silt beds with harder sandy beds that stand out. They were deposited perhaps 4 billion years ago under sedimentary conditions, possibly in a river. It is also very small, less than 3 feet high, so the picture does perhaps create a more dramatic appearance than it really is. What about the Phobos monolith? Well, the official explanation is it's just a large rock. A very large rock. Not that rock, it doesn't take roids. Specifically, it could be what is known as impact ejector, which is where material is excavated from a crater cavity during impact. There is really no way for us mere mortals to clearly determine what these anomalies are. We have such little evidence that really, well, either side of the argument can be heard. And all the information that we do have is from NASA, one source of information, who have been known to be a little devious in the past. Now, I'm not a NASA conspiracy theorist, but I do accept that they have been caught doing some really dodgy things. It is not unknown for NASA to alter images. In fact, they do it with all images. They touch them up before they release them to the public. And we know they've done it to Mars. Indeed, the very color that we associate with Mars, you know, the red planet, well, it's not. It is the red-orange hazy planet when run through NASA filters, but in reality, it's more of a red, grey and bluish type planet. And so the official explanation for really all of these anomalies are they are just some type of rock formations. And boringly, that is where I would land, no pun intended, until a time where we have more definitive proof that they are artificial. Having said all of that, some people may ask, well, 
Why haven't NASA been back to the Cydonia area? We have the ability to have a robot on Mars which can take close-up pictures. Get on the remote control and whiz it up the road, NASA. Is there a possibility that some of these anomalies could be artificial structures? Well, yes, it's a possibility, which would then beg the question that if these are some types of monuments, who built them? Thank you.